This is the Drive and Dish Midweek Mix Up. Welcome, everybody, to the NBA Drive and Dish podcast. This week, we have a mid-season episode for you. And don't forget that you can always hashtag DADpod in Twitter, and we'll make sure to get back to you. Also, search for the Drive and Dish on iTunes and hit the little subscribe button. We always appreciate your reviews and your comments. And with us this week, joining us from Arizona is our Phoenix Suns analyst, Ryan Lehmeyer. How's it going, buddy? Hey, Tim. Great, great being back. Oh, absolutely. So the Suns tied the NBA record for the most wins for a team to not make the playoffs with 48. Do you think the NBA should take a look at possibly taking a top 16 format instead moving forward for uh, the teams making it into the playoffs next year? Personally, I would say no. I know everybody at ESPN and all the other analysts around the country are all for this new tournament style. And I, I just not a fan of it. I mean, the NBA has been the way it's been for so many years. I get it that it would be more favorable to, you know, the West where San Antonio having the best record wouldn't be stuck playing, say, the Dallas Mavericks and they'd be playing like the Atlanta Hawks. And I can see it'd be a benefit for everybody involved other than the East teams, of course. But I, I just, if it isn't broke, don't fix it. I know it is kind of broke, but it's still part of the, you know, history of the NBA. And I think it's West versus East and it just would kind of destroy what it's done over the years and the matchups and that it's made. And I think it'd be detrimental if they changed it. How much did it sting to know that the Phoenix Suns would have been the third spot in the Eastern Conference but didn't make the playoffs in the West? You know, it stinks. It was hard to watch. and Of course, you're frustrated and you know disappointed with how the season ends. But at the same time, I just don't think this team was ready. And as much as I think they could have competed, I really think they could have pushed somebody uh, a six or seven game series in the first round. I, I think it's even I think it's better for them. I, I think it's players for how much they developed this last off season and through this season and pushed as hard as they could go and just didn't make it over the hump. I, I think it's gonna make them want to work harder this off season. I and I feel like if they would have walked in the playoffs and I don't know how much they harder they would have worked for the, the following season. If they would have went out in the first round, would they have been satisfied with and I, I just feel this will help them grow as a team and grow to be better and work on things that they need to work on in this off season. And I think they'll come back stronger than ever next year. They're going to get a bunch of you know TV games on TNT and get some national attention finally. And I, I think they're just going to you know just want it so much more next year. Now, Eric Bledsoe will be a restricted free agent this summer. Um, all the talk is that the Phoenix Suns fully plan on matching any any reasonable offer sheet. Uh, do you think that the Suns should offer Eric Bledsoe a max contract? Yeah, I think in the NBA you have to. I mean, if you have a player that, if he wouldn't have been hurt, again, that's the thing, he's out a third of the season. If he would have played in those games, they would have easily made the playoffs. I, I, I don't see how you could ever justify they wouldn't have. And... I feel like if you have one of those kind of marquee players that, you know, might not be a marquee player right now, but in a year or two easily will be and will be a household name, I think you have to just match. And, again, it's no matter what, it's an asset. So, like, if things don't work out and as long as you can play, it's like what, you know, the Pelicans did with Aaron Gordon. You match him. Granted, he just can't stay healthy, so you just can't trade him. Like no, but there's always going to be somebody like a, a Charlotte Bobcats or some bottom bottom feeding team that will need somebody to sell tickets, and they'll pick up a terrible contract to do it. And I, I think, regardless, I you got you got to pick up Eric Bledsoe's contract. I, I just I just don't see how you could just let somebody like that go. Uh, speaking of contracts, Channing Fry wants to work out a contract extension this summer. Uh, what do you think the Suns should do? You know, I, I think he, he had such a stellar first half of the season. I, and personally, I think him doing the 82 games, it's it's amazing that a guy like that with that, many, with that big of a health scare came back and came back the way he did and was able to play 82 games. But personally, I think down the stretch or at least like, you know, two-thirds of the way through the season, they should have sat him for a couple games, got, got him some rest. He just... I, I felt at the end of the season, like, his defense wasn't there. His shot was just a little off. And he was probably just really tired. I mean, to, like, not be able to even exercise for a whole year, year and a half, and then come back and play eighty two game an 82-game NBA season, just astonishing. But I think he was worn down, and I, I think they should keep him. I mean, he... He's he's a Phoenix native, you know, grew up here, played college in Tucson. Uh, he wants to be here. 
I, I see, you know, no matter what a player like that that has injury scares, he's going to pick up his option because it's his option to pick up, and it's $6.8 million, and you're not going to leave it on the table. But I, I see what's going to happen is, you know, some other team's probably going to offer him some three-year deal, like what he's looking for. But I, I think he'll take less money. I think he'll restructure his deal. And I think, you know, you might see something three years for $15 million almost $2 million for next year by restructuring. And I, I see it happening. I, I, again, you know, the, these teams have so much cap space, and especially with, like, a veteran uh, contract, for them to give him $5 million, it's just, you know, a drop in a bucket. I, and I think that's what they should do. Now, if Channing Fry stays, do you think that Markeith Moore should start next year? Yes, I, I think Markeith should move up more to the starting role. I, I liked his game a lot. There's still a ton of things Markeith needs to work on. I mean, he sometimes puts himself in these traps that he just he starts doing moves before he even does what he wants to do and also when he gets on ISO he travels at least twice every single game before he dribbles and these are things that can easily be cleaned up but there was many times down the stretches of games where he'd have the ball in ISO and would commit a travel before you know just wouldn't dribble dribble the ball before he moved his feet and and they were lost possessions that the Suns dearly needed in some of these games. And I, there's still a lot in his game that I think he needs to work on. But again, from where he was two years ago, I mean, he's became an outstanding player and somebody the Suns can count on. Uh, many Suns players could be up for most improved player this coming year. Which Sun player, if you had to pick one, would you pick as the most improved player on the Suns? That, that's a real tough question. I know there's all this talk, you know, Marquise should be six man. I think he's had a huge impact on the team and, and grown a lot as a player. You could go that way. I still think it's Gerald Greed. I, I know everyone says Dragic is going to win most improved player, but Dragic has been the same player that he has been for like three seasons. I mean, granted, he keeps getting better and better. He was already a star at the making three years ago. And, you know, the Suns just didn't want to go with him as a leader of the team. And they, they dumped him to Houston. No, they made the mistake, brought him back. But he was still playing great in, in Houston and came back, and he's been stellar ever since. So I, I really don't picture how you could give a guy that, you know, is making $40 million, has a $40 million contract, the most improved player trophy. But I, I would definitely go with Gerald Green just because – Everyone just kind of gave up on the guy. I mean, he just no no one wanted him. He, no one gave him a chance. Again, like uh, I think last time we talked, we talked about Green, and he, he takes uh, he took some bad shots at the beginning of the season or at the beginning of games. But and most coaches would have benched him, but he finally would find his touch and just be on fire. And he was so consistent throughout the entire season, uh, and just his energy and heart, and you could just tell he wanted to be out on the court and liked his teammates so much uh, that I, I don't think there's anybody more excited to watch in the NBA other than maybe Kevin Durant. And I mean, I know that's a far stretch, you know, to put him maybe above LeBron James or, or Kevin Durant. But I, when, every time he had the ball, you just thought the ball was going in the net. And that's hard to say about any, any player in the last few years, at least. All right. Well, we have about a minute left. And uh, so last question, the Suns, the Suns seem to have a good core, but could upgrade at a few positions. Which spots and or, and or free agents do you think that they should look at to upgrade this coming summer? I, I think they really, you know, again, it's going to change. It would change the whole dynamic of the team with Channing Fry and, and Markeith. But I think they need to go after somebody like a Kevin Love that they can get rebounds and just things that the team really needed this year and just couldn't do. They they just were getting out rebounded constantly, like especially against like teams like the Grizzlies or Spurs and these teams that have, are just bigger than them. And I think they need somebody like a Kevin Love. And I mean, to me, a Kevin Love is like a 300% upgrade to what Chang Fry's game is. So again, I think like the, these contract extensions and talks are going to be, we're, they're not really going to be talked about until the draft is done and free agency is done. And I think all that stuff's important to see what kind of direction they go into. But I, I think, you know, I read a thing yesterday about how Paul Gasol would be a great free agency pickup. And I, I think that's a bad decision. I, I think this team is so useful that you need somebody that's still young, but still a veteran. And I, I think the team is built with as much cap space as possible and some assets. And I, I think even for, I could see them giving up a Plumley and a 14 pick to go get a Kevin Love away from Minnesota. They have, you know, I could see them do some sort of sign and trade thing. And I think that's what they should do. I, I think that's really the only free agent that it would be a vital asset and a, and a, and a great pickup.
Oh, absolutely. Well, thank you so much very much for uh, joining us, Ryan. Now, where can people find you on Twitter? My uh, P Concerts AZ. That's where you can find me on Twitter. All right, fantastic. Well, thank you so much for joining us, and we will talk to you a little bit later on over the playoffs. Thanks, Jim. Thanks, bye. That's all. That's all. Thank you for listening to the Drive and Dish NBA podcast. Don't forget to subscribe on iTunes by searching Drive and Dish. On Twitter, use the hashtag DADpod. You can find Kevin at Refuse to Lose, Justin at Jay Kuzark, and Tim at Tim from Tucson. We would like to thank Cox Media Group for allowing us to use their studio here in Jacksonville. We are in no way affiliated with the NBA. And any sound clips you heard on today's episode are copyright of the respective copyright owners. Go get them. We'll talk to you later. Until next time. Toodaloo. Yeah.